This is Hamp Lee III from Spiritual Combatants, where we're training soldiers for Christ. I want to thank you for joining me on today's message. Today, I'm going to be talking about living with the cars that you are dealt. And I'm going to go through just a few points. I may not identify those points exactly. I may just kind of speak right through them, but it may, you may see something pop up about each one of, the, one of these points. And really what I want to talk about is how we can live with the cars that we'll dealt in life. And often we are given certain cards in life, and these are things or events that happen and things that we're left with based on decisions that people make uh, against us or for us, things that we have done maybe in obedience to God or even in disobedience to God. Certain things come about. There are certain events and some tragedies or maybe some trauma and some other things that occur in our lives that gives us a set of hands of cards. So sometimes we have like the eight of diamonds and we want all we want an ace. Sometimes we get the joker and I'm talking about like the people like not like joker's wild you can just place it anywhere. No, people are acting up in our lives and they're clowning. Maybe sometimes that's even us, but it's not what the hand that we have is not the hand that we really want to go out and deal with life. We don't want to face life with the hand that we've been given. And what happens oftentimes, we get upset, we get angry, we, de we get depressed, and we don't want to move forward. We don't want to go anywhere. We just wallow and we remain in this constant circle in this cycle to where we can't get out that be because we're so heartbroken and so frustrated with with the life that we've been given, that we don't focus and consider that the life that we've been given is the life that God wants us to live, he wants us to lead, and to glorify him out of the life that he has given us. And so what happens oftentimes is when we do have that life, we get mad at God, we get mad at the people that's around us, and we become someone other than a person of love, of compassion, of forgiveness. Our hearts become hard, we become angry, we become bitter, we don't want to forgive. We won't, don't want to show anyone any type of mercy. We are just surrounded and we're consumed by these cars that we have. They're not the cars that we want. We want an aces and I got something different. And so I want to make sure that I get these aces. And we go to God, some, some of us may go to God asking for him to change our lives and we're not going to move until we do. And sometimes it, and it can seem like it's, it becomes so um, encompassing and it kind of surrounds us. It almost seems to, to be to suffocate us and where we don't want to move and we do, we feel like we can't move. We feel like we're in this deep fog and we can't see. We can't move anywhere or to a certain destination because I'm looking at this hand that I've been given. But what I want to pre present to you is that all of us have a certain certain cards and certain things that we have to live with, certain things that's happened to us that we have to live with, certain places we have to go, certain things that God asking us to do. But in all those situations, he's asking us to glorify him in spite of the cards that we've been given. Let me read to you from 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 11. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. We have like the testimony. We have the testimony of God. It, he lives in us. And so we, in this treasure, this treasure of Christ that speak of him, it lives in us. In these earthen vessels, in these vessels that are fallible, people who are fickle and, and uh, superficial, people that are up and down, that make mistakes, people that may not always be there for you, those people, we have the treasure. You and I have this treasure. because That's some of us. Sometimes we haven't been there for other people. We've let people down. We've hurt people, sometimes unintentionally. But that's us. And then we've given someone some cards that they didn't want to live with. We've given people some decisions and some things that they had to face because of our own actions, sometimes in sin. And sometimes we've done things intentionally and unintentionally to someone else. And somebody's living with the decisions that you made against them. And so all of us have that. We have to understand that. So while we're going around asking for God to change us and give us a better set of cards, we also have to remember the cards that we've given to others and how we've treated other people to make sure that we are living in a manner that is pleasing to God so that we can treat others with, with dignity, respect, and as children of him. And that's what we have to do as well. So here it is. We have this treasure. We have this great treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. That we're 
we're not trying to show ourselves as being all that, but it's because of God and his glory, his excellency, that we're able to do anything. It's because of him. So we are troubled on every side. This is in verse eight, but yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. We, as we're going through these situations, we may find ourselves where we have trouble on every side. We may be distressed. We may be persecuted. We may feel like we're we're cast down and destroyed, but we are not lost. We have these cards that are in our hands, but God is using those cards to show the excellency of his power through him, that in spite of that, he showed that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. So in spite of the things that has happened to us and the cards that we receive and the cards that we're given and we're dealt in our lives, we're going to we're going to use those cards to glorify him. That in spite of the things, maybe life isn't the way that I want, but I'll make the most out of what God's given me so that I can be a child of God, so that I can be obedient to him. I can walk in love. I can walk in forgiveness. And that we all set our eyes on the kingdom, on the eternal kingdom that's to come. Because many of us, and we all struggle. Some of us struggle deeply with the, this journey that where we're at right now. We're kind of, we're not at point A and we're not at point B. We're somewhere in the middle. Some of us are closer. Some of us are near. But we're so focused on this destination that we lose on this journey that we're on, that we lose sight of the destination that God has for us. That he has a great life for you and for us and for me. He has a certain purpose for us to live. And he's going to do that through the cars that we've been given. He's going to send other people. He's going to send help to you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He's also going to send his word for us to, we have to read the word, but he's going to remind us of the word. He's going to teach us and guide us and lead us all the way to him. And, but he's going to do that through the cards that you've been given. He knows the cards that you've been given. He knows the things that you're going through. He knows the struggles that you have, and he is going to be there with you all the way. And those things oftentimes draw us closer and nearer to him, but in all those things that regardless of what I have, regardless of what comes against me, no matter what happens, I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use these cards to the best of my ability through his power to be able to show who he is, to show Show the light that is in God, that my light will shine, so that he will be glorified and people will be drawn to him, not to me, but to him. And he wants to use you in the same manner, but we have to be able to say, you know what? These are cars that I have today. And that there may not be the cars that I, I'm looking for, that I want, but I'm going to make the most out of these cars. I'm going to choose to love. I'm going to choose to be at peace. I'm going to choose to show mercy. I'm going to choose to love. I'm going to choose kindness. I'm going to choose not to be rude. I'm going to choose to give a soft answer. I'm going to choose to walk in obedience and integrity and honesty. I'm not going to lead people into temptation and sin. I'm going to live to the very best of my ability by God's help through his grace to live as a child of God in the manner he wants me to live in right now where I am. Because what he's looking for, and we read this through, when you read through Revelation, one of the major themes in Revelation is the overcomer. And let me read to you about the, re the overcomer in Revelation 21. And he says, I read it one through eight. He says, I saw a, this is John speaking, he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And that's something that we're all looking for. God knows I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking for a time when I don't have to be concerned about the, the pain and the sorrow and all the things that's going on around me and some of the temptations and tribulations that are coming against me and 
happening around my house and the things I have to deal with, there will be a day when I no longer have to deal with that and neither will you. That's what I want. That's what you want. But what, but in order to get that, let, but in order to get there, let's read this too. Let's keep going. Verse five, it says, and he sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto them that is a thirst of this fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And he says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murders, murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He that overcometh, those who overcome that will inherit all things. That means we have to be able to overcome the cards that we've been given. Now, then, in overcoming, some of it may not, may, some of it, some of the issues we may have may be physical. But in spite of the things that may have happened to me, physical, physically, I'm not going to allow those things to to hinder me from glorifying God. I'm not going to allow the things that have come to me. Maybe people in my life or that's in my life right now, this, the relationship isn't working the way I thought it would. But I'm going to still do what I have to do and do my part to pray for them, to help, and to be loving and kind, and to be merciful in spite of what they may. Be doing to me. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to try to do my best to be a peacemaker. I want to give and to be kind to others. And in spite of what I've gone through, and I will use what I've gone through to be able to show compassion to others. And I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to overcome because Jesus overcame the world. I too am an overcomer. And I'm going to make sure that I don't allow any temptation or sin to keep me from experiencing eternal life, to experience a life where all my my tears are wiped away, where there's no death, there's no more sorrow, there's no crying, there's no more pain. All of the former things will be passed away. Everything that you have, those, those cards that you have in your hands, those things, these cards, those cards will be passed away. All the former things, what you're dealing with right now, one day will be passed. They'll be gone. There will be former but because of what you do with these cars today and how you how you respond to what you've been giving will determine where you will be in eternity. And all of us, me included, I have to take the talk cards that I've been given and do the very best that I can to be the man of God that he wants me to be. You can be the man of God that he wants you to be or the woman of God, that you can be the child of God that he desires so that you can bring glory to him. That in spite of what's happening to me, in spite of the things that are going around me, I am still going to show for the glory of God. And I am going to live in God's purpose and doing the things that he is calling me to do and in spite of the cars I've been given, in those things, I'm going to use them. I'm going to thank God for them because often many of the things that's come to us are drawing us closer to him and helping us to move out of sin, move out of those tempta temptations, to move out of selfishness and pride, all the things that are not like him, all the things in the world, many of the things that are occurring in our lives. And I know a lot of them that's occurring in me are drawing me closer to him. And he's using those things to further, to prune me and to purge out all all those things that may not be like him. And he's shaping me in the image of his son. He's created a good work in me and in you, and he's going to continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that just because you're in Christ that you're going to get all aces. And I thought that when I came to Christ, I thought when I came to Christ that everything was going to be right in life. I wasn't going to have no problems, no worries. But it doesn't mean that. It, what it means is that God's going to be with us all the way, that he's going to live in us, and he's going to teach us, and he's going to guide us. And through his grace, he's going to give us the ability to do everything that he's called us to do. He's going to do that for you. Everything that he's called you to do, even with the hand that you've been given, he's going to give you everything you need to be an overcomer. So I pray today that you will take some time maybe to review this message and really consider where you are in dealing with the hands that you've been dealt with, that you will choose to say, you know what, the hand that I have may not be what I want, but I'm going to make the very most out of it so that I can be an overcomer, that I can stand in eternal places with God and I will experience an eternity of peace with him. So I pray God will bless you. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns, please feel free to shoot me a message. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well so that you can receive more videos just like this. And until the next time, may God bless you abundantly. God bless.